a mobile company. This is a picture of me in my office. In fact, I run Effortless English Incorporated, the whole company, from a mobile office. Effortless English is not a normal company. We are filled with nomadic people who love to travel. Because of this, and because I'm the most enthusiastic traveler of all, I decided to structure our company as a nomadic unit. In other words, Effortless English does not have an office building. Each of us, Tomoe, Chris, Kristen, and I, works from a laptop computer, a professional microphone, and an internet connection. These tools allow us to work almost anywhere in the world. So, uh, in November, my office was in Guatemala, and later moved to Honduras. The above picture was taken in a Guatemalan coffee shop. Now, I'm in San Francisco, and next week, my office will be in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Tomoe is currently in Osaka, Japan, but continues to work on her Japanese language blog and continues to translate our emails and web pages into Japanese. Tomorrow, I fly to North Carolina and the southeast part of the United States to visit Chris. We will be working together on a new album of lessons. Being a mobile company has many advantages. First, it allows us to meet new members around the world. Also, travel exposes us to new people and new ideas. Instead of being stuck in a boring office, we are constantly visiting new places and meeting new people. I believe this makes us more interesting as individuals and as a company. Another advantage to having a mobile company is that it makes us sensitive to you, our members. When we travel, we are often forced to use other languages. For example, in November, I had to use Spanish every day. My Spanish is terrible, but the experience reminded me what it's like to learn and use a foreign language. This helps me understand you and your experience with English. Our mobile company is also fun. It's much more fun to work in a coffee shop or in another country or even in our own apartments. Because we are having more fun, we have more energy and enthusiasm. We love what we are doing, and hopefully you can hear that in our MP3 English lessons. Finally, creating a mobile company has allowed me to choose only the very best people. Because I don't care where people live, I can focus on recruiting only the best possible people. We communicate with each other using email and Skype conferences. Of course, I visit everyone in person, too. For us, international travel and communication is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that everyone in the company lives, and it's a lifestyle that is built into the essential structure of Effortless English Incorporated. A typical language school. I arrive at Casa Xilahu, the Spanish school, at 8 a.m. I come into class and sit down. I'm very enthusiastic about learning Spanish. Last night I did all of my homework, plus I studied extra. The teacher says, hola. She doesn't smile. She already looks bored. She wastes about 10 minutes going through papers while I wait. I'm the only student in the class, so I have no one to talk to. Finally, she asks for my homework. She reads the essay I wrote and corrects it. This is useful. I'm happy to get feedback on my writing. Next, she asks me to talk a little about what I did yesterday. I start talking, but she gets a call on her cell phone. She takes the call and starts chatting. She hangs up and then says, I need to get some coffee. I'll be right back. Ten minutes later, she comes back. I suspect she was actually talking on the phone. She asked me to start talking again. She looks totally bored, no smile, no interest in what I'm trying to say. 
Next, she gives me a picture and tells me to describe it. I do my best while she sits in the corner, looking bored. Occasionally, she corrects my mistakes. After this, she tells me to read a paragraph. Then I have to do a worksheet and fill in the missing words. Then I do another worksheet, writing answers to short questions. While I write, she stands and looks out the window. She leaves the room several times. Finally, we have a 30-minute break. I started today with lots of enthusiasm, but now I'm bored and annoyed. I'm happy to have a break. When I come back from the break, she gives me a word search and a crossword puzzle. A word search and a crossword puzzle. I can't believe it. I have been teaching for over 10 years, and I know that this is a total waste of time. It's a useless way for the teacher to do nothing while the student wastes time looking for words in a block of letters. Now I know for sure. My teacher doesn't care at all. She is bored with her job. She has no motivation, no energy, no enthusiasm, and no method. At the end of the day, I must admit that this school is mostly a waste of time. The one good point is that I get to talk in Spanish for the last 45 minutes, which helps boost my confidence and motivation and enthusiasm again. As I walk home, I'm reminded of Steve Kaufman's words. You cannot depend on schools to teach you. Learning is your responsibility. And so it is. I won't let this school destroy my motivation. I know, in fact, that this school is a very normal and typical language. I have seen these same behaviors at many English schools I have worked at. Of course, I know that every teacher gets tired sometimes. But even on a bad day, I try to at least have energy and enthusiasm. After this experience, I finally understand the majority of comments I get from my students. Many people write me and thank me for the lessons. They like my teaching method. They improve their English speaking. But the most common comment I get is something like, Thanks so much for your energy and enthusiasm. I love listening to your voice. You make me excited to study English. You make English fun. They like the lessons, but what they really love is the energy and enthusiasm. After today, I totally understand. Today, I didn't care about teaching methods. I just wanted her to show some interest in me. I wanted her to enjoy teaching me and enjoy helping me learn Spanish. Instead, she almost destroyed my excitement for the language. But this is not the end. I will focus on the few good points of the class, an opportunity to talk in Spanish, and I will spend my free time listening to interesting Spanish, reading interesting Spanish, and writing Spanish. I will enjoy the language and learn it myself. And finally, I will remember this experience to motivate myself to continue improving as a teacher and to always love teaching English. Advance English Academy. Hi, everyone. As readers of my newsletter already know, a friend of mine has opened a new English school in San Francisco. It's called Advance English Academy. The school has a central location downtown near Market Street, near the main streetcar and bus lines. In fact, it's not very far from my apartment. Zachary is the owner and director of the new school. I worked with Zach when I was teaching here in San Francisco. The school has several good points. Number one, it's cheap. San Francisco can be an expensive place, but this school has very reasonable tuition, only $250 a month. That's 16 hours of class per week for only $250 a month. I don't know of any other school with such affordable tuition. Number two, they sponsor student visas. Zach's school will help you go through the immigration process and get into the United States and stay here. Number three, help with accommodation. The school can arrange a home stay for you or can help you find an apartment. Number four, they are in San Francisco. As everyone knows, San Francisco is the best city in America.
If you're interested in studying English in the United States, I recommend Zach's new school. San Francisco is a great place to study and live. In my opinion, it's the most interesting city in the U.S., which is why I live here. <laughs> For more information, see the Advanced English Academy website. And if you come to San Francisco, email me. I'd love to meet you. American Accent Training Review American Accent Training is a book and CD set by Ann Cook. You can buy it on Amazon.com. As the title suggests, this is a pronunciation-only system. It is designed for one thing, to improve your English pronunciation and get you to speak more like an American. This system has two major strengths. First, it focuses mostly on intonation rather than individual sounds. Uh, most pronunciation books and CDs uh, focus on the sounds of difficult letters. Uh, for example, they spend a lot of time on pronouncing R and L. Uh, the result is that students improve these sounds a little, but their overall pronunciation is still terrible. For most students, intonation, not the sounds of letters, is their big problem. Poor intonation is the reason native speakers cannot understand you, which is why I like American Accent Training. The program focuses on the most important pronunciation skill. Uh, the second strength of this program is that it is listening-based. Surprisingly, uh, many pronunciation programs focus on the eyes instead of the ears. I've seen a lot of books with complicated drawings of the mouth and tongue, for example. Uh, all these complicated drawings are useless. American Accent Trading includes five CDs, so it is listening focused. And as all effortless English members know, you learn to speak by listening. You improve speaking with your ears, not your eyes. This is true for pronunciation, as well as fluency, grammar, and vocabulary. American accent training, however, does have one big weakness. It is boring. There are a lot of word lists and sentences to practice, but none of them have any meaning. You spend your time practicing random words and sentences. So, the biggest challenge with this program is finishing it. I recommend American Accent Training only for students who are advanced and who want to focus all of their energy on pronunciation. If you are very motivated to improve your pronunciation and can endure some boredom, the program will help you. For everyone else, I recommend using movies and my English conversation lessons to improve pronunciation. These are much more interesting to use. Simply listen carefully, pause after each sentence, and copy the speaker's pronunciation. Uh, make it a game. Pretend you're an actor. Good luck with your English learning. Basic Flaws of Language Education My terrible experience at the Casa Shilahu School does have one benefit. It's an opportunity to analyze the failures of traditional language education. As you know, language programs have a failure rate of over 95%, which is terrible. Why do they fail so much? What is wrong with language education all over the world? 
Of course, I know many of the reasons because I know the research on this topic, but it's interesting to experience this failure again as a student. It's interesting to analyze what the schools do and how they think. In fact, I believe the fundamental problems are mental. The reason language schools fail is that they hold certain incorrect beliefs. These beliefs affect their teaching methods, their attitudes, and their behavior. So, what are the basic wrong beliefs that most language schools and teachers hold? Well, number one, teachers can and should force students to speak. This is called the output belief. Most teachers think that output, speaking and writing, is most important in language education. Therefore, they try to force their students to speak and write frequently. They do this even with beginning students, forcing them to speak the language before they are ready. The problem is, this belief is totally wrong. We don't learn language by speaking or writing. We learn from input, listening, and reading. Research shows that understandable input, listening and reading, is the fastest, most efficient, and indeed the only way to learn a language. Does this mean speaking and writing are not important? Of course not. It means that in a classroom, listening and reading must be the primary activities. It means that forcing students to speak is a waste of time. This belief is really a sign of teachers' impatience. They don't have patience, so they try to push the student to speak, speak, speak before they are ready. It's also a sign of teachers' laziness. When the students speak, the teacher can do nothing, just nod their head and pretend to listen. But if the students are going to listen, the teacher has to talk and must try hard to help the students understand. Effortless English is a listen-first method. Our lessons use listening primarily, with some reading. We do this because the research is clear. Listening is the key to learning a language, and listening is the key to speaking well. Belief number two. Teachers can force students to be perfect. This is another sign of teachers' impatience. They believe that the students must be perfect. Teachers believe that errors are bad and must therefore be corrected constantly. They force their students to think about the language, about the rules. And what happens? Their students become nervous and slow. They can't communicate because they are so worried about perfection. They constantly translate and analyze grammar rules. Their speaking is terrible, absolutely terrible. This belief is wrong. Perfection is a lie, and it is not possible. Language learning is a process, a long process. During most of that process, errors are necessary and normal. Children do not speak their native language perfectly. Even highly educated adults make occasional mistakes. To learn quickly, to speak well, students absolutely must make mistakes. The research is clear about this. Students who focus on communication, not perfection, learn faster, speak better, and eventually make fewer errors than students who focus on grammar rules. For this reason, we never focus on perfection with effortless English lessons. We encourage students to communicate. We never analyze grammar rules and we never teach grammar rules. You learn grammar naturally, like a child. You also enjoy the language. You relax, you smile, you laugh, you think. You learn English by focusing on ideas, stories, and communication. Wrong belief number three. Error correction helps students speak better. This is a very common lie. 
Most teachers think that error correction helps students speak better. Unfortunately, many students also think this helps. They actually ask the teacher or a friend to correct their errors while they speak. Now, this seems logical, but it's totally wrong. There is a lot of research about this. In the research, they usually have two groups. One group receives a lot of error correction. The other group receives none. The teacher never corrects their spoken errors. After some time, three months, six months, one year, five years, they test each group. There is no difference. Both groups still make the exact same number of errors when speaking. So, obviously, error correction is a waste of time. But it's worse than that, because when the teacher corrects your speech, you become nervous. You start thinking about English. Your speech becomes slower. So, both groups make the same number of mistakes still, but the error correction group speaks slower, understands slower, and enjoys the language less. A terrible result. This belief comes from the idea of no pain, no gain. Many teachers think that students must suffer to succeed. They think that the pain of error correction will make the students better and stronger. They are totally wrong. In language learning, it's pain equals no gain. With effortless English lessons, you are never corrected. Also, we encourage students never to have their speech corrected. Instead, focus on listening to correct English from native speakers. Your errors will improve when you listen to a lot of correct English. Even better, your speech will improve automatically. You don't need to think about it. You don't need to be nervous. You relax, you listen a lot to the lessons, and your grammar and pronunciation improve automatically and effortlessly. That's why we call it Effortless English. Business versus self-employment. It's very important if you want to have your own business to understand the difference between a business and self-employment. Self-employment is what most people create when they try to make their own business. Self-employment is basically a job. The only difference is that you no longer have a boss. You are both the boss and the employee. Certainly, self-employment is more fun than working for someone else, but it has many problems. The biggest problem is overwork. For example, uh, many lawyers are self-employed, but they work too much, 50, 60, 70 or more hours a week. In many ways, they don't own their business, their business owns them. When self-employed, you're basically doing the same job you used to do for someone else. A key trait of self-employment is that your business only makes money when you work. If you take a vacation, your business stops making money or makes less. A true business is different. It's not the same as a job. A business is an organization of systems. It continues to work even when you are not working or present. You create systems by automating your business and or training others to do parts of it. Your goal is to create a business that can run without you. Ideally, you should be able to disappear for six months and the business continue working well while you're gone. This is easier said than done. To accomplish this, you must organize every part of your business, 
You must simplify all tasks and train people to accomplish them easily. You must create a strong, clear management system. You must automate every part of the business that you can so that things happen automatically. To understand this idea better, I recommend the following two books. The E-Myth and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Both are available on my Amazon Business Bookstore or at your local English bookstore. You'll also learn more about this idea with my new Success Business English Lessons. Casual English Conversation you need casual English. You need the English that native speakers use with each other. You need to learn the English that Americans use with their friends, their families, and their coworkers. This is the common, everyday English that we constantly use. And yet, this kind of English cannot be found in English textbooks. Schools don't teach it. Very few English learners know it which is why so many learners come to the United States and can't understand regular conversations. In San Francisco, I have met many students with high English test scores and great grades in their English classes, and yet, when they sit at a bus stop, they cannot understand what people are saying around them. They have absolutely, after all, no idea what normal Americans are saying. They have been trained in formal, academic English with a focus on grammar rules. I think this is totally backwards. Common, casual conversation should be the first thing you learn. The first need, after all, is to communicate with other people. You want to chat with people on the bus. You want to make friends and understand what they are saying. You want to talk to your coworkers. You want to understand TV shows and movies. Learn that first. Then, and only then, focus on academic English. To help you, we are currently working on a new collection of recorded, real, spontaneous conversations. These are real conversations with friends, family, and business partners. We aren't censoring anything. You'll learn the real English that we use every word with each other, including slang, idioms, swear words, sexual comments and jokes, cultural references, etc. You'll hear filler words such as ah, uh, um, you know, like. You'll hear the natural rhythm of English, the way we go back and forth, the ways we interrupt each other. We'll have all the conversations transcribed, and then we'll make short notes to explain the slang, idioms, etc. that you don't find in a dictionary. We're doing this because I have realized that this is a huge need. In fact, this is probably the biggest need our members have. We hope to build a big collection of these conversations with text and explanations for you. So when you come to the United States, or another English-speaking country, you'll understand what everyone is saying. In the meantime, do yourself a favor. Use movies and TV shows to start learning casual English now. Hi, and welcome to Effortless English. This is AJ Hoag talking to you from San Francisco, California. Today's podcast is called Change Your Goal. Let's get started. It's so easy to get impatient. We are conditioned by school and society to demand instant results. Our attention spans get shorter and shorter. School, in particular, teaches us a lie. The lie is that in one semester or four years, 
we can take all the required courses, pass all the required tests, and then receive our degree as proof of our mastery of a subject or subjects. But this is a farce. It's a farce in most subjects, not just language education. In fact, formal school is a very poor place to master any subject or skill. I got my undergraduate degree in journalism. I graduated with honors. I took all the required journalism courses and was near the top of my class. I thought I knew the subject well. But upon graduation, I realized that I knew almost nothing about writing or journalism. I was told by many reporters and editors that journalism school was almost useless and that the only thing that mattered was developing one's skills independently through experience. Several years later, still clueless, I went back to school to get a master's degree in social work. I took classes, passed tests, and endlessly analyzed obtuse theories of social work. At the end of my program, I had an internship. I was placed in an agency that helped abused and neglected teenagers. After just one week there, I realized that I had no idea what to do. My master's degree program had not given me any practical knowledge nor usable theories. Everything I learned as a social worker, I learned on the job. I learned by trying things, examining the results, formulating new ideas, and then trying more things. Relentlessly, over several years, I improved as a social worker. The master's degree was a ticket to higher paying jobs, but it provided nothing useful beyond that. The truth is, school is not a good place to learn. Life is where you learn, and that learning is a lifelong process. There is no end. There is no graduation. There are no permanent grades or records. True learning, true skill, true mastery come from the process that Anthony Robbins calls kanai, constant and never-ending improvement. The Japanese call this kaizen. The truth is, learning never ends. Most language learners, including me, are still stuck with a school mentality. They think that if they take enough courses, they'll get a certificate that will prove that they speak the language. Then they try to talk to a native speaker and discover that their certificate is, in fact, useless. Many language learners also have a graduation mentality. They think that if they study hard enough in one year, two years, five years, etc., they will finally graduate from English and be finished. But there is no graduation. I am a 38-year-old native speaker, and I'm still trying to improve my English speaking ability. I'm trying to work on the rhythm of my speech. I'm also trying to reduce the number of fillers that I use. Uh, for example, um, you know, like. As a writer, I still have a lot of improvement to make. I need to develop the clarity and power of my writing, and I'm still learning new words. The point is, I will always be improving my English ability. I'll never be finished. I'll never graduate. English learning is a lifelong learning process. And though I'm starting 38 years later than I did with English, I'm beginning to realize that Spanish is also a lifelong learning process. I'm trying to shift my attitude from a graduation mentality to a canai mentality. There is no finish line. There is only constant and never-ending improvement for as long as I live. A canai attitude can help your motivation because it takes off the pressure. So many language learners view learning as a race. They are desperately trying to get to the finish line as fast as possible. Instead, try adopting a mindset of constant and never-ending improvement. Don't worry about finish lines. Instead, be sure that every week you improve just a little bit. You might learn a few new phrases. You might make a tiny improvement in listening comprehension or pronunciation. The next week, be sure to make a few more improvements. They don't need to be big. They don't need to be dramatic. Small, even tiny improvements are enough, as long as they are constant and never-ending. 
I'll end this article with a challenge. For the next few months, I challenge you to forget all your finish line goals. Forget TOEIC and TOEFL scores. Forget certificates or degrees. Forget any idea of finishing English. Instead, for the next few months, make constant and never-ending imp- own movement your only goal. Decide that every week you will make a very small improvement with your English ability. And you will do this every week. Constantly. Consistently. Never ending. I just did a podcast about vegetarianism on the forums. Uh, there's this super, super cool learner member named Shri. She's actually Indonesian. Mm-hmm. And anyway, she comments on my blog a lot. She's really active on the forums. She helps other people out and answers their questions. She's just like the uber super learner, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, God, I wish I could be like her with Spanish. I'd be fluent in a month. But uh, anyway, she she's kind of she's not vegetarian, but it sounds like she eats sort of quasi-vegetarian. Um, mm-hmm. Like she eats lots of vegetables, eats really well. Well, she started like scheduled this whole Skype discussion with other members on the topic of vegetarianism. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of cool, and so that sort <laughs> of inspired me to, um, you know, maybe write a little, do a little podcast about being vegetarian. Uh, maybe I should. I can interview you sometime about because I talked about my story why why I why I'm vegetarian but um, yeah maybe we could chat about that sometime and record it okay would you be interested in doing that when when did you become vegetarian well you know honestly not strictly until at some point in Thailand because I was still occasionally eating fish. So you're kind of mostly vegetarian, though, before that, right? Well, yeah, that... Like everything that... was cut out except for occasional fish when I was 22. Wow, so quite a while. Yeah. Because I don't remember you eating that much fish. I did in the beginning, and it was more of a rebellious thing, because I felt like Todd is the one that pressured me into quitting eating meat. And I wasn't comfortable with that. And I was like, well, you know, I've already been thinking of moving along these lines. Yeah, but, but you don't my hang, somebody. my, my, I was hesitant about giving up fish. And so therefore, I'm not going to. Well, yeah, of course, more, you don't want somebody pushing you. That's, that's not good. Right. So in the beginning, it was more, and it definitely became less and less. But I think I still, you know, I honestly don't remember ever eating it in Thailand, but... I must have because it seemed like there was this turning point when I, when Watt and I went with um, Gene and Brandy down to Phuket and went out on the the boat when they went deep sea fishing, and they, one of them reeled in this fish, and it's big fish, and it's flopping around, and somebody picked up this mallet type thing and hit it, and just knocked, killed it, but instantly. Mm-hmm. And when I saw that, I was like, I'm done, I'm not even eating fish anymore. Yeah, you sort of realize, oh, they, they, they are alive and sentient. Right. <laughs> yeah. Know, they, they're aware and they suffer. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of get that a little bit when I scuba dive. You realize how, like, fascinating and intelligent they are. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, they're not playing. I started realizing, I think, when I had my 75-gallon tank, actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that's always been for me that you know the, the main thing. It's like if they're sentient beings that with a with some sort of nervous system that's capable of suffering. It's like, yeah, I don't want to cause that. Yeah. Community is important when learning anything especially when learning English, it's important to have a community, a club of other enthusiastic learners. This is why people continue to go to schools even though they know 
The school's methods are terrible. People want a community. They want to join with other people. They want the increased motivation, support, and inspiration that a community provides. Which is why our website is called the Effortless English Club. Effortless English is more than great lessons. It's also a community of very positive and enthusiastic learners. In fact, we are very careful about membership in our community. We only accept the very best English learners who are very positive and enthusiastic. We monitor our club quite closely and we have zero tolerance for the negative, insulting, or childish behavior usually seen in internet communities. On most internet forums, for example, you find a massive amount of insults and arguing. We don't allow that. Such members are quickly and decisively eliminated from the club and are never allowed to rejoin. Yes, this is a tough policy, but it is necessary. It can be difficult to create a great international learning club online, and I admit it. I am not interested in accepting and tolerating everyone. My goal is to create an international English learning club of only the very best learners. I want the most enthusiastic, the most supportive, the most friendly, the most energetic members in the world. And that, in fact, is exactly what we have. The members of the Effortless English Club are absolutely amazing. The level of enthusiasm and friendliness is tremendous. New members are always very happy to discover such a fun and supportive learning club. We have many super members who will answer your questions, give you learning advice, encourage you when you feel tired, and inspire you with their success. Soon, we will be making that community even stronger when we launch our new master member video site. The video site is designed as a club for the best of the best. A monthly membership site where that week top 1% of our members will meet and will get weekly new videos from me. All videos will have text so you can understand everything, but more importantly, the videos will focus on four powerful topics. Advanced learning strategies and lessons. The psychology of success. Personal financial success. And daily life in North America. The master member video site will focus not only on English, but on learning and success in general. This is a place where our top 1% will meet and learn together. A powerful club and community of the best of the best. We are very close to launching the bait version of the site. We're planning to start testing next week with a few of our all-star members. Testing will then take about mm, six to eight weeks, and then we will offer membership to our email subscribers only. Membership in the master member video site will only be available to our email subscribers. So, Look in your email inbox for updates about our newest, most exclusive English learning club. And as always, enjoy your English learning. Bye-bye. Disappointing first day. I was very excited to start Spanish classes today. Why? Because the school in Shayla said they use TPR storytelling to teach Spanish. As you know, my listen and answer lessons use the TPR storytelling technique. This technique is the most powerful, the most effective, and the most efficient language teaching method I know. It's awesome! Like many English learners, in the past I suffered through terrible Spanish lessons. In school, we rarely listened. We never read anything natural or interesting. 
In my high school Spanish class, we only studied grammar rules and memorized vocabulary. And so, I never learned to speak Spanish. Last year, I started studying Spanish by myself. Unfortunately, I haven't studied much. In fact, I haven't studied at all during the last six months. When I did study, I just listened to interesting articles and read interesting mini novellas. It helped. I learned more from doing this than from one full year of Spanish classes. But what I've always dreamed of is to learn Spanish with my own effortless English methods, especially listen and answer lessons. So, I came to class today full of excitement. Finally, I was going to learn with a great method. But I was disappointed. While the school claims to use TPR storytelling, in fact, they do not understand the method. They also don't use it very much. So what did we do in class today? We reviewed conjugations of past tense verbs. Ah! Back to high school. So, I guess I'm not going to get much help with Spanish. I'll just have to continue learning on my own. If I ever do become fluent, maybe I will create my own effortless Spanish lessons to help others avoid the frustration I have experienced. Meanwhile, I am even more committed to helping English students learn with the best methods possible at Effortless English. Effortless Japanese Update Some of our longtime members know that Tomoe and I have wanted to do Effortless Japanese lessons for a long time. In fact, Tomoe actually started working on lessons at one point, but she stopped. She realized that most customers would be total beginners in Japanese. We talked a lot about the best way to teach total beginners and realized that total physical response would be best. But there was a problem. TPR, total physical response, requires video not just audio. In total physical response, the teacher gives commands and the student responds with actions. For example, um, a super simple lesson might start with stand up. The student then stands up. Of course, the commands get more and more complex as vocabulary and grammar build. For example, walk slowly to the door knock four times, turn around, then return quickly to your chair. The power of total physical response is that you learn a lot of vocabulary very quickly. Even more powerful, you learn the vocabulary without translation. Because of this, you learn it deeply, naturally, and understand it instantly. Once past the beginner stage, Tomoe will use TPR storytelling just as we do in effortless English. The good news. We bought a video camera and a microphone. We are currently planning the set and lighting. Tomoe is planning the lessons. When we return from Central America, we will start shooting. Our plan is to shoot the lessons as quickly as possible. Then I will edit them later. We'll offer the lessons as download videos similar to the way effortless English lessons are sold. You'll watch them on your computer or iPod. I'm very excited about these lessons because I know they will be the best Japanese lessons available anywhere in the world. I know a little Japanese, very little. I tried textbooks and found them difficult and boring. I tried Pimsleur's tapes, like them, but learned only a very small amount of vocabulary and phrases. I listen to Japanese podcasts, but found they are mostly talking in English. To say it simply, the Japanese lessons currently available suck. They are terrible. So, I am doubly excited about Tomoe's effortless Japanese lessons. I'm excited as her husband to help her with this new project. And I'm excited as a student to finally learn with fun, powerful, Effortless Japanese Lessons! Look for more updates in December about Effortless Japanese. <laughs>